Today on Real Estate Daily, we're gonna go over how to get the best rate possible. We're gonna go over an article from Housing Wire about that, as well as what happened to the Bank of England yesterday can affect you. And I wanna go over it, it's extremely important what is happening in London right now. But first, welcome everyone to Real Estate Daily. My name is Troy, and every day we go over the latest news in real estate, housing, and the mortgage markets. Now, before we jump in anything, I know we're growing like crazy, but I still hit that like button, boom, boom, and then hit the subscribe button. Bingo, that little pointed finger up there. Now, sometimes you won't get the information when we when we put out these videos, so hit that notification bell. Ring my bell right there. I appreciate it, guys. Hey, let's just jump right into it. This is from Housing Wire. And I know that it sounds so obvious, but I will tell you today, it means more than anything. With mortgage rate volatility, buyers can save by shopping around. There is no question. You need to shop around. It's so important. We are now, as at, oh, let's, let me back this up. We went over two days ago that a lot of mortgage programs are gone, but it doesn't mean that, that those mortgage programs or new mortgage programs are the same at every single bank or lender you go to. So I can't stress this any more than I am right now. You need to go out and shop because if some lenders have adjustable rates, uh, adjustable loans uh, with adjustable rates, others don't. Some have 40 year mortgages going on right now, others don't. And if you talk to one loan officer, he's only gonna give you what he has available to sell you. He's not gonna tell you that everybody else has, or somebody else has something better for you. Always remember that. I don't care if they're your best friend or just some guy off the street you've never heard of, or it's just a stranger, you must go out and listen to everybody. And then what I suggest is if you have a copy of your credit score, of your credit rating, of your credit report, give it to them and tell them, what is my rate today? I know that they're gonna all wanna run your credit and that's BS. If you run a credit once and those parameters are for mortgage mortgages, then you can go ahead and shop around those, those rates. Now, if you look at DTI, one guy can give you the DTI, it's done. One, one lender can pull your credit report, that's going to be those FICO scores, then you can just tell them, based upon that, I wanna know what rates and what programs you have today. I think that this is extremely important. Next article. Another really important article here by CNBC. This is something that everyone needs to understand and everyone needs to know. Bank of, uh, Bank of England intervenes in bond market after historic sell-off. Guys, What's happening around the world is that central banks are raising rates. And if they raise rates too quickly, too fast, because they're so far behind the inflation curve, they can cause catastrophe within their economy. And this is what happened to the Bank of England yesterday. They had a complete collapse. Now, a lot of you out there, a complete collapse in their, in their bond market, which then was a huge sell-off in their stock market. What does this mean? Every, every one of you, and mostly, I, every one of you needs to know this, but a lot of you out there and a lot of your parents have 401ks or have retirement funds that are tied to the stock market. The stock market collapses, their wealth is gone. So what happens is, you know, for a lot of us over the, over the years is that we took money out of our paycheck and then our, our uh, boss or job or company would match it and they put it into a retirement fund, they'd give it to a fund manager and that fund manager would then manage it by purchasing several different stocks and, and huge bulks and that's, that's where the fund would be. It would grow upon those though that that stocks or annuity or whatever those are they would grow now if the stock market goes down you're still paying that guy and that guy gets paid big money i'm telling you right now this the retirement funds in england were falling off the cliff people were losing 50 percent of their wealth the years the the decades that they built up for their retirement funds were disappearing almost instantly so what did the bank of england do they just slammed on the brakes and they started 
infusing money back into their economy, buying maybe mortgage-backed securities. Like what we do here is we buy mortgage-backed securities, right? And that brings down our interest rates and it doesn't, then all of a sudden the stock market slows down and goes, oh my God, overnight money, money now is cheaper than it was before. Right now money's getting expensive and the more expensive it gets, the less people want to, to borrow, less people borrow, the growth factor in US companies goes down. And if it growth goes down, that means hiring stops or hire, or, or you start to lay people off. That's, that's kind of the connection. This is what happened and the Bank of England happened yesterday. We need to all learn this lesson and know it because I, I know that some of you out there are like all excited this happened because it, it reversed policy. But here in the United States, we don't, we're not at that point. So before you get all excited and you're saying, hey, we're not gonna raise interest rates anymore. It doesn't matter if inflation goes to 10%, you know, then, then we, you have to understand that we are still in a strong economy, way stronger than a country like England. Next article. To make my point even clearer, once, once a lot of these Fed chairmen see what's happening over the, over the world, around the world, what they do is they're coming out. So today, Fed Vice Chairman Brainerd, you know, warns against retreating from inflation, fighting uh, inflation fight prematurely. So she's saying, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're not going to go back and, and infuse money into an already inflated economy. We are going to stay the course. And that's exactly what she said. She wanted to make sure that everybody understood that we were that they were not going to slam on the brakes, buy mortgage-backed securities, bring the bond market, bring interest rates down, bring the bond market under control where money was much more easier to borrow. And then we saw growth in the economy. That's not what they want. That's not what she's saying. She simply wants to go and tame inflation first. Next article. So here it is. Today again, Fed prefers, prefers, preferred gauge shows, uh, pr preferred gauge shows inflation accelerated even more than expected in August. Yeah, they're gonna redo those numbers in August. Our inflation numbers were bigger. I know that September, I know for a fact that just on gasoline prices or fuel costs have gone up significantly this month. See, the strategic oil reserve that we had that our president went ahead and burned off to keep prices down to show everyone that inflation was under control has now about empty. So we're at a 40 year low as they were full when he started. Now we're at a 40 year low. On top of that, here in Southern California, we know that, you know, a lot of refineries have a what's called a summer crude and they'll they'll go ahead and make that crude and for the, the bump or rise in the amount of fuel that is consumed here in California. Well, their factory or refineries are now slowing that down to even stopping them. And that's why over the last 14 days, we've seen approximately, and this is just my guess, this is my guess of me driving around, and I don't own a gas car, but me looking at gas prices gone up 20% in 14 days. Guys, this is ridiculous, and now we're seeing this acceleration. We saw, we saw, you know, again, the government here, the government in the United States, as well as our, our state government, they suppressed these things you know, and then beat, it, beat their chest saying, check it out. You know, we're seeing that inflation's under control. Even President Biden on 2020, a Sunday ago, came out and said, what's the problem with inflation? It, it, it just ticked up 0 0.01 or point, point 0 0.01, 0.1 actually. And the interviewer is like, whoa, well, hold on. It's still at 8.3%. You know, Every, you know, Americans are struggling and he couldn't get past that. Well, it's, it's, it's slowing down. No, it's still near, it's still at 40 year highs. And if it's not tamed, it, and if it was at the old numbers, how it, was, how it was calculated, we would be at all time highs. He's just lucky that we're suppressing those numbers. So I'll get off my, my soapbox here, but we're seeing that the Fed is coming out and saying that, you know, all the core inflation is up. Everything, all indicators are up much greater than we thought in August. Next.
Slip at home prices may provide housing market relief. I think it actually, I think here in Southern California, we're seeing kind of it just kind of mellow out or it, it plateaued. And it's kind of going down just a little bit. But again, if, the, if your home, if homes that are actually fixed up are still selling like crazy with multiple offers. Homes that are in original condition or need rehab or need updating are sitting on the market. Now, as I'm reporting uh, on our on our Instagram or other social media platforms, I go over weekly numbers in Southern California. We're, we are seeing, again, a downtick in the amount of properties that are active on the market. People just don't have the wherewithal to move. You know, there's nowhere to go. I mean, you, you, you have a 2% interest rate, which most... Most people have three and a half percent or less. 66 to 70 percent have three and a half percent or less interest rates on their homes right now. Anything they do, wherever they buy, they're going to jump into sixes. So it doesn't really make sense to actually sell and move. So I'll get off that. Let's go on. Let's go on here. Bloomberg Wealth, with everything else fall, failing or falling, I'll call it failing as well. Cash is back. Cash is king, guys. Cash is king. And credit is the is is the henchman he will kill you every time now i'm looking at my credit card rates and they're at 25 to 30 percent annual i mean I, I i anything i get on my credit card i pay it off immediately if i even use it it is ridiculous to pay 25 percent can you imagine if how the housing market would be at 25 percent okay all-time high but it's easy to slide in an email slash a piece of mail saying we've raised it from 22% to 25.99%. So easy for a credit card company to do it. And you don't realize that minimum payment is not even really, is barely covering just interest. So your balance keeps staying in the same and you just keep paying interest for good. Please do me a favor, pay those balances down as much as you possibly can. We do not need to pay interest as a as the majority of our payment on our credit cards the last article here of course is the interest rates and mortgages we're looking at everything's pretty flat except for jumbo jumbo jumped 13 points six and a half percent man i i mean boy when we started a couple of months ago this was right in the mid fours it has just exploded up a uh, straight up trajectory and jumbo is a very big piece a very part big part of southern california here well guys thank you very much for joining us i appreciate anything any comments you leave below more than happy to answer them for you otherwise check out our opinion piece that uh that we'll have tomorrow it is uh, somewhat of a prediction of what i said is going to happen in the fourth quarter and and just some of the things that are happening along the way that are going to get us to what i predicted otherwise guys have a fantastic weekend and i will see you on monday